Unbar the damn doors. And listen to me. Follow the flares, climb the graffles. We will get out of here, all of us. Winter railed. Soon, some soldiers unbarred the door. With smiles on their face, they believed in Winter's words. As soon as the doors was unbarred, soldiers ran ahead, lit up the dark with automatic fire. Instead of semi-auto, the battle rifles or zap rifles are offered, swearing and jeering at the monsters that hold. You like that? You inbraided fox! Come get me, you ass kissers! I'm right here, was another. Winter led the way, dragging oceans on over by his sh her shoulders. Many soldiers ran ahead, eager to escape, and stayed ahead of the monsters. A few brave ones remained behind to protect Winters and his charge. It all seemed to be going well. The, f the flares along the pathway seemed to be keeping the monsters at bay. Sir, C4 has been deployed. We are coming in after you, the radio sounded. Winter stopped dead in his tracks. His face showed fear. You insubordinate dumb fox, he fought, screaming. No, no, belay that once more. I cannot allow you to... He yelled to the radio, resuming the, his dragging. With all due respect, sir, you need assistance. Hold your position and we will come to you via helmet tag trackers. I demote you, sergeant. Return to the surface now. No, you have wounded. If I remember correctly, hold out for a bit and you'll be saved, she said one final time before the radio clicked off, signaling that she went offline. Fuck! Winter screamed. He pulled up the pace and started carrying Ocean. He had to get to the surface before the rescue team went too far in. Gunfire signal. Contact. And ahead, Winter and his small brave team arrived to the tunnel filled with flares and soldiers and monsters. Soldiers were taking cover, overturning minecarts, and were slaying into the monsters who were charging the ranks. Some were climbing on the walls, their red eyes burning a hole into Winter's head. Some seemed to be focused on him, as if he knew he was the leader of the tra trespassing ponies. Winter heard a screech, looked up, a monster was flying down at him. He drew his revolver and almost unloaded a full chamber into the creature, but it did not stop. It dropped down and smacked on the soldier, sending her flying against the wall. It turned its glare at to Winter and soldiers, and the soldiers standing near him, mostly focusing on Winter. It screamed a blood-curdling scream and charged. The soldiers began to fire, and it had no effect. Winter dropped Ocean, soliciting a yelp of pain from her, and braced himself. He was going to run straight to him, he had no time to get out of the way. When it did crash into him, the force of it came at him, sent him reeling back. He collapsed from the immense pain he felt. It pounced on him, and began to rip his armor. It's got the lieutenant! Cover, cover, cover! One soldier yelled drawing a combat knife and jumping on the monster's back. He began to stab at it, the monster drawing purple blood. Bullets had no effect, but yet a sharp knife did? Good to know, he said, grabbing his revolver with magic. He knew he only had one round left in it, and he was going to make it count. The monster had attempted to grab the brave soldier that was on its back, but its attempt ended when, the, when Winter placed a round in its eyes. It fell back, nearly crushing the pony on its back. I, I, I can't believe it. I killed one. Winter yelled. Excitement filled his normally dumb voice. Some soldiers were cheering, some were, some still shooting. The death of their comrade caused the monsters to run away, purple blood trailing from behind them. It seemed they demoralized when they lose one of their own. Winter grabbed Ocean, who is trying like hell not to get dirt into her wounds. He begins carrying again down the hall. Normally it was a stupid idea to get go the way the monsters did, but it was the only way out. 
many soldiers ran ahead, chasing after the fleeing monsters advancing to safety. They were shouting, jeering at the monsters the whole way. Winter grin. They know they can kill them. Gunshot sounded ahead. At first, it sounded as if they were encountering another. But it, it was. Just some soldiers waiting for winter and they were celebrating. The morale seemed to have begun to soar of the death of one of those things. Winter hoped it stayed that way. What the hell? Keep moving, you guys! I got my escort! Winter said, referring to some of the brave ponies staying with Winter. The soldiers nodded and ran ahead. It didn't take long for gunfires to sound off further. Winter rounded the corner to find that that they were at where they rapidly rappled down. Soldiers made him improvised covers and fired at everything that moved in the dark. Friendly fire! Friendly fire! Hold your fire! Friendly on your six! Winter yelled at one of the soldiers, began firing at them. He flushed. Oh shit, sorry sir. Hurry, get over there! Those things are all around! He called out. Winter and the soldiers obligated and galloped over. Winter began being careful not to rupture any wounded organs in Ocean's body. Why the hell haven't any of you began to climb up yet? Winter asked, setting Ocean down against an overturned cart. We were waiting for you, sir. We were going to cover you as you went up first, he said. This soldier was an ex-insurgent leader. Winter was about to say something, but his radio started pitched up. Sir, we have your location. We are actually looking down at you. Get up here and we can treat your wounds. Wait, what the fuck's that noise? The mayor's voice asked the refer asked referring to the shrieks coming from above oh shit winter thought they were making another assault shit contacts what are these things the radio chirped soon the fire sounded off from the top of the ridge the radio began to come alive with orders of scared pony's voice we need to get up there now soldiers Move in, move to reinforce, go now, Winter ordered, strapping Ocean's armor to his. He was going to have to climb 120 meters with her clinging to life and dangling from his armor. No pressure. Soon the creatures descended upon the soldiers below. Many were taking off guards and some were screaming in terror. They were distracted by what happened above to remember that they were targets as well. Some immediately began grabbing and dragging into the darkness. Some screamed ended not long after. Some began to fight back, firing at whatever moved in the dark. But many began to panic and climb the ropes. Those c capable of flight either remained to help ponies get to the top or fled, fled and assaulted those at the top of the ridge. Winter grabbed onto a rope and began heaving he himself up. Soldiers below covered and retreated, but many climbed up. Winter had gotten about 10 meters up before something caught got his attention. He looked over to the source. It was one of his soldiers climbing up, was being attacked by a couple of monsters. One having her hooves below, the others her hind legs. They were pulling her apart. Winter levitated his revolver to assault her by the time he lined up his sight. Sweet Celestia's flank. Winter fought, his magical grip on the revolver failing. The mare had been ripped and had been ripped in half before his eyes, her blood pouring to the ground below. Testants were sliding out. If she was alive by the time her body was drained of blood, she wasn't when they dropped her, her two halves falling to the chaos below. Winter, grip of his revolver failed, and it joined her on the ground. You fucks! Winter yelled, magically throwing rocks at them. They were looking at him, 
grinning. For a time, Winter forgot he was go trying to protect a mare dangling from his armor. But by the time he remembered, the monsters were swooping past him, trying to knock him off balance. Oh, fuck me, he thought. He tried desperately to hold on, clinging to it like a foul wood to a mother, but to no avail. They knocked him off and he fell. He collected his thoughts before he fell. Deciding that this would be the end, he placed Ocean on top of him. He would take the burden of the fall. So he died, not her. He closed his eyes, assumed that his spine would break on contact with the ground. He would perish, but it was not to be as he hit the ground with a thud and started sliding. The chains connected. Ocean and Winter's armor broke, causing Ocean's to fall off. Winter stopped and coughed out blood. Had he survived the fall? He was starting to laugh when the monsters landed in front of him, starting to grab his leg. It was going to drag him into the darkness. Winter felt fear. He had not felt it yet, but now he knew what it felt like. He started kicking, trying to loosen its grip, but all his thrashing just pissed it off. It screamed at him, placed both its hand on the stallion's leg, and placed a foot on his stomach. Arg! Winter screamed at his legs, detached from his body. The creature ripped it off and drank the blood that poured from the severed limbs, ignoring the blood coming from his limbs, the body. Oh my goddess! Winter yelled before slumping to the ground unconscious. Ocean looked up at the lieutenant. Intense pain filled her body. With muscle she moved. She gasped when she noticed his missing leg, and when she saw the creature drinking from the attached leg, she looked frantically around for a weapon, anything. There has to be one. Come on, she murmured frantically. The officer had tried to save, and now well, it was her time. It was time to repay the favor. Finally, she found a discarded revolver. It looked a lot like Winter's. She aimed it at the creature, who noticed her moving. She wasn't far from it, really. Maybe 18 feet? It shrieked a horrible shriek and dropped the leg. Charging. Ocean. She screamed in terror and closed her eyes, pulled the trigger. She opened her eyes a second later to find the creature's dead. She had hit it in the head, between the eyes. A really lucky shot. She laughed at her luck before scrambling over the winter. She checked for pulse. There was one, but it was faint. He was still alive. She heard something behind her, causing her to turn and fire a blind shot, missing the bat pony behind her. Shit! Friendly fire! She yelled, before looking at Winter's body. Oh hell! What happened? She asked, before looking at the dead monster in the leg next to it. Never mind. Hey, firework. Give, give me a hoof. With Winter's, she said before looking back at the bleeding ocean. Ocean, the monsters are fleeting. Did you kill that thing? If you did, then you fucking saved us. We are going to get you medical attention. Just hold on, she said Ocean's shoulder as she took flight. She flew to the ridge where, wo where wounded or and dead ponies were littered. There were rem medics and civilian paramedics Tending to those wounded, the bat pony lied Ocean down and called up for a paramedic. Ocean looked over the fine winter laying next to her. Firework brought him up. He was still unconscious. Two paramedics came over the ocean into Ocean's visions. These two are badly wounded. You gotta help them. Firework yelled. One paramedic ran over the winters others while the other looked at Ocean. We can't treat them here. Their wounds will get infected. Stitches! Get the stitches and call in a medical chariot. These two need immediate medical attention. Ocean looked back at Winter. He had tried to save her, and now she saved him. She was happy, proud. Her vision began to fade. She looked at the doctors. They were rushing over to her. The last thing she saw before her, her vision failed. Or stitch was a stretcher. Epilogue. 
Winter woke up gasped and had a strange feeling washed over him. It was a mix of pain and something missing. He looked down, drenched in sweat, his coat covered in blood. He realized he was in a hospital. He was alone. The TV was on, but it was muted. It was the news channel. The doctor came in. Ah, good, you're awake. Another f few days, and I would have had to take you back to the ER for a coma, he said, smiling, looking, ocean in the eyes. Doc, wh where am I? What happened? I feel like I was having a nightmare, Ocean said, leaning his head back down, wiping the sweat off his forehead. Well, if that nightmare was about you facing your death, then it wasn't a dream at all. I was left out of most of the information, but when they brought you in, you were missing a leg and bleeding out. You were unconscious as well, and from the blood loss you sustained, you were rendered into a coma for two weeks, the doc said, looking at his clipboard. Winter sat up and stared at the doctor. I, I'm missing a leg? He asked quiverly. The next word the doctor would utter would affect Winter's future. He knew that and was scared. He loved his job, and despite not recollecting what happened, he imagined it was fun, as his job usually was. Exploring underground caverns was fun. Yes, the doctor said. Winter nearly broke in the cave. You lost it in a fight with some kind of something. That's all I knew. That's all I was told about why you were in this condition. But no worry, we have an artificial leg already for you, and we'll attach it when you leave. Congratulations, Lieutenant Perfect Winner. You're going to be perfectly fine, the doc said, smiling even more, and reached out to shake Winter's hoof. They shook, although Winter wasn't happy about this. A knock on the door caught both ponies' attention. Oh, yeah, you might have a visitor as well. A Batmare has been coming to visit you for the past five days. She was in the ER with you, the doc said. Winter looked back at the door. Ocean? Winter thought. She was in his nightmare, or whatever it was. He was trying to rescue her. You owe a lot to this, to this mayor. I was told she saved your life, the doc said. Come in, he called. The door opened re to reveal a mare. A bat pony, all right. She had a teal eye, a dark purple coat, was wearing a cloak. All bat ponies wore in the sun. She was wearing an eye patch and a lot of gauze and bandages. But other than that, she looked fine. She was smiling. In what? She was smiling and was visibly nervous. Hey, Doc. Is he up yet? Actually, yes. He just woke up. Excuse me. I have to go finish up your paperwork. When I return, then you can sign out and leave, Mr. Winter, he said. Leaving the room, Ocean walked up to Winter's bed and sat up. He was lying back, looking at her. The extent of her wounds concerned him. What happened, Ocean? He asked, exhausted. A routine mission gone to hell, sir. We were attacked by a netherworld on monsters. I was nearly killed and you saved me, so I returned the favor, she said, smiling, and looked at his stump. Although, I would, I should have acted faster. Who took my position? Oh, <laughs> awkward. I was hoping you wouldn't ask, but I did. After I woke up, I found out I was promoted to on merits of corporal. They named me the new leader of what's left of the underground scouts platoon. She said, looking away, and chuckled uncomfortably. Winter laid back down and stared at the ceiling. His career was over, and now he was crippled. Well, on the bright side, he can write on his experience. He looked back at Ocean. He was looking at him. She visibly, she was visibly nervous, and she even started sweating. Well, I just came up to check on you, and you seemed good now, so I'm gonna... She said, staring at the do starting at for the door, but she was stopped by Winter. Spending five days checking up on me to see if I was fine? Not... No, that's not why you're here. You're nervous. What's wrong? Something happened? He asked, concerned. 
He might not be a platoon commander anymore, but his, but their welfare still concerned him. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's a question I wanted to ask that is bugging me. I thought to wait, so I was gonna leave. She said, her cheeks were flushed. Well, it must be important since you've been visiting me for five days. This being six, ask away, he said. She shifted uncomfortably. She looked at, as if, she did not want to ask. Well, er, it's just, um, well, it is to say, I was wondering, w I can't ask it. Maybe, maybe this will say more than words, she said. She was visibly frightened. She reached into her cloak and pulled something out. Winter struggled to understand what she was what she just pulled out something gold and diamond she pulled out a wedding ring one fact truly remains what had happened into that cave even with the eyewitness report from sergeant winters and his co and his co-leader oceans it is still speculated what truly happened down in that cave was it a truly a terrifying beast from an unknown world? Was it actually real, or were they all imagining it? The one question settles, though. Do they live among us?